Hello everyone. Good morning, good evening and good afternoon from wherever you're joining us today at Sankal Forum. It is my extreme honor to welcome each and every one of you to this master class that we have specially curated for all the startups who are looking to fundraise. I would like now like to introduce our speaker today, Anuj Sharma. He is the founder director of Alcisar Impact with over 18 years of experience in impact investing, business strategy, international structuring, impact fund management and related fields. He is an active angel investor in social enterprises, primarily in frontier markets with an active portfolio of 21 startups. He's worked in more than 16 countries with clients ranging from leading multinational corporations and SMEs to startups and non-profit entities. He has founded South Asia's first transaction advisory firm in impact investing in social enterprise landscape in 2008. And he's worked on the largest number of impact investing transactions in the past one decade. His other engagements include visiting faculty in TIS, IIT Bombay, Kanpur, Mandi. He is the mentor and speaker at Fashion for Goods, Netherlands, Venture Cap, Denmark, Mass Challenge, Boston, and Houston, Naropa Fellowship for Ladakh. Anuj, it's an extreme honor to have you with here today. And while we introduce you, I would also like to quickly launch a poll to get to know our audience a little bit better. Everyone joining us today, please respond to these three quick questions to help us understand and uh, invite Anuj to be able to better moderate and curate this session for all of you. Yeah, Thanks, Parida. I think it's a very exciting opportunity to be here and uh, getting chance to talk to you all and interact. Uh, talking about something which I really like to uh, kind of discuss and also strategize for early stage startups. So uh, this poll will help me to at least understand what kind of a broader group we are. So we seems to be pretty diverse group here, which is good. Okay. We have participants also joining us from the Whoa platform, and we would encourage you all to be able to put in your responses even on the Whoa chat, and we will make sure it's directed to Anuj here. So please let us know uh, where are you from and who are you uh, joining here today as, uh, and so we'll be in the best position to be able to support you through the session. We have about 40 to 50 percent participants already answering, and we'll wait about uh, 30 seconds more to receive all the other responses. Great. So Anuj, it seems like we have a huge uh, diverse population joining us today. Absolutely. Would you like me to end the poll and share the results with the audience? Yes, I think that will be easier and we can start out with Cool. So we have a decent amount of uh, variety in terms of founder advisors and others as well. And people have raised funds. That's a good news. At least nine of them. And uh, all nine at least have raised grants. Out of nine, I think four have raised equity as well. So good. But zero have raised debt. Okay, fine. No worries. So what I'm going to do is we have a very focused time. And for that focus time, uh, I would like to utilize it to the maximum. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just warm up in terms of giving a basic concept about the fundraising scenario and also the ecosystem and landscape. And then we will deep dive into a couple of case studies to understand how we can build up the narrative and also what visualization we can have with respect to the kind of capital that we should also raise. So I'll just quickly come up with this uh, presentation and then uh, I'll come up. So if you if you talk about uh, a enterprise uh, startup scenarios, most of us are kind of starting our journey with respect to uh, a mission that we have, the dreams we have, and also the kind of visual 
scale that, that, that we need to have. And in the journey, most of us would like to have some kind of a fallback option, sometimes a sounding board, sometimes some kind of a clarity with respect to the uh, way we should scale up the kind of size uh, of the mission that we can have, and also the kind of speed with which we can grow as well. And in that, there are certain raw materials which are required as a startup. And the raw materials are having a good team, that means the resources. And in that same thing, you another resource is money. There is another resource which is network. There is another resource which could be market outreach. There are lots of things. And in that, like one of the most significant things that we all kind of somehow do not understand or not able to kind of cope up with with respect to the financing itself. And financing in some way has been kind of put it in a position that it is a position of weakness rather than a position of strength that we all talk about it. So the idea is here, like when I'm talking about is to kind of amplify the entrepreneur first approach in this case. And the second is like the ecosystem is increasingly shifting towards from an investor first to entrepreneur first approach as we are going to talk towards that. So a quick thing about like who we are, like if I put it like this, we work as H. Parita has already said, uh, some of the sectors and others. We work with lots of uh, like known investors from across the globe. Uh, we have been also part of UNDP SDG impact when they were putting up the guidelines for SDGs across the world as well. Where almost like uh, all the other leading, uh, I will say, fund allocators were part of it as well. And we were the one of the only South Asian entity to participate in that. Okay, let's get to work, if I say. So I'll, I'll show you some of the pictures and let's let's try to uh, visualize how what and things that comes in our mind. Uh, just once again, yeah. So here, like if you see like there's, there's a uh, three people are there. One is kind of uh, selling vegetables. If you see two people are talking together. Now, if you see like as a startup, one of the most important thing that we do is we reach out to people for fundraising, we reach out for partnership, we reach out for various other things. And one of the most important media in this whole journey is visuals. And many times when we are talking visuals, we also uh, need to understand the power of how these visuals communicate to each other. And in that, the pictorial thing or video things becomes very, very important. We will go further as well and I'll tell you how all these things become amplified. Now, this picture may be a picture of myself, like maybe I am the entrepreneur here, or it is a stakeholder that I cater to that could be there, or it could be a geography that I'm kind of depicting it and so on and so forth. So the messaging has to be uh, done where I'm talking about my audience in a different way as well coming in. The same way if I go to the next picture, uh, here I'm talking about a farmer which is primarily selling mushrooms. There are kids which are showing themselves with respect to a camera and there's women which is holding a little bit of a basket. And all these people have their own stories if you put it like this. So one of them primarily depicts that they are nomad and trying to sell something. There could be a school and the school is trying to amplify that I am primarily into education and I'm trying to do it. These women could amplify or denote that there is some kind of a livelihood related initiatives and so on and so forth. It seems pretty simple, right? But most of us kind of bury ourselves in terms of lots of detailing in terms of words. And the words doesn't go through into the next level. Like if if you are talking to an investor, which is coming out from, let's say, sitting in US or sitting in Europe or even, let's say, Singapore and so on and so forth, uh, you are not meeting them in person most of the time. You are communicating your vision and also the way you are trying to talk about things through some kind of concept. And that rather than making it word heavy, if you try to use some pictorials and then explain things, that becomes far more uh, important and powerful. Or otherwise, suppose if you don't want to do it, you may want to create some small sensation or something very bland in terms of it. You can use something like this as well. Now, if you see, there's a your cell, you want to depict a renewable energy solar system, but there is a monkey around. Now, you may say, why on earth this monkey is relevant to this? So you are trying to create something which is giving an indication that I can also have some kind of a element of surprise coming in. Or you can have something very similar, just having these cons and having a very beautiful picture as well. But why I'm trying to talk about all these things is when you're talking about pictures and then you're getting into the storytelling to the next level is what all these things starts in. And that's where something like this is very important. What are growth? 
and growth fundamentals. So I was showing some kind of a small picture and then I'm talking about growth. Most of us are not able to understand that without a growth, investment scenario is not going to come in picture itself. So if you are having a, let's say, a mom and pop shop nearby and you are saying that I would like to have this whole uh, initiative of uh, my mom and shop to continue doing it, you may not need an equity participation or you don't need a huge amount of capital. Maybe you can just survive with the kind of sales you can generate on a day-to-day -day basis. That's not something which we will call as a startup to a larger extent. So growth potential is one of the most important characteristics of a startup, we would say. And it has to be a scalable business. And when you're talking about scalable, in that whole aspect, you need raw materials, as I said. And one of the raw materials is the kind of financing needs you have. And in investment then converts into the other side, which is primarily we are talking scalable business. So I'm talking about growth potential. I'm talking about growth, which needs a kind of a... Uh, aspect of investments and investment is not something which you are putting for the sake of putting so just to kind of give a sense suppose you would like to have one shop and you are saying i can i have the ability to go to 10 shops i can multiply and to multiply that into uh, 10 shops i need financing that means you are showing that there is a gap in financing and that gap is not a gap as a as a negative connotation you are saying gap is a positive connotation that if somebody put in one dollar there's an appreciation possibly to $10 in the next future. So coming early and supporting the entrepreneur is very important. And in that, you have to show the growth mindset. And that's what we are talking about startup business. Otherwise, all businesses could be startup. Then there is nothing called startup if we can put it across. And this is one of the first important enabling factor that you need to have in this. And in that, another thing that you need to get into is there are different stages of development as well. And for that, different financing needs are there. One is a POC, uh, like proof of concept stage. Then there could be pre-revenue stage could be there. Then, then post-revenue, if I put like this, then there could be a growth stage as well. Now, all these things are having a very different and unique way of addressing the financing needs. And that we need to be clear into it. And then we need to also know how to address that whole thing. One of the first challenges, if we put it across, is the finding the right size of financing. And believe me, like most of us only feel the financing way we can go to the next level is equity and just to kind of give you a sense if i if you are talking to any of the finance expert they will say that equity is the most expensive form of capital as well but that is the only thing that we kind of seek in and in the poll that we were doing earlier i was not seeing a single person getting into debt so that is something which we anyways will be discussing i'll tell you the power of like multiplier effect in terms of different instruments as well coming in now, coming into the other side, if you put it like this, the framework, if I put it like this in terms of funding ecosystem is, first of all, the most important thing that should not be compromised ever is your own vision, entrepreneur vision. That's what I'm saying. The shift has to be from investor first to entrepreneur first, which is a very important thing. So entrepreneur vision should not be diluted. That's one important thing. Second is the stage of entity, if we put it like this. And then the third thing which needs to be clear is why you're wanting to raise funds. Are you wanting to raise for maybe growth to an X number, 2X number, 10X number? In geographies, you want to go. Let's say you want a marketing uh, kind of a build that you need to have because your market outreach has to increase or you want to build a team. And some people get con confused that, hey, look, I'm having a school uh, like which I'm trying to uh, build. And for a school, I'm trying to set up a building which I'm making. And I need a capital expenditure. Now, in capital expenditure, why on earth you will need equity? Somebody can give you financing and you can make a building. Uh, and financing could be in the form of debt then. There is no point of getting into equity and getting into capital assets. Uh, the same way, what are the requirements that you have? And in that funding requirements also determines the kind of valuation metrics you can have. Now, at a very early stage, if somebody asks me, what is the valuation that I want to have? Rather than talking about a bottom to top approach, I will say top to bottom is a better, better thing. What does this mean is, let's say, first of all, identify what is your funding requirement and then see what is your stage. Let's say you are at a very early stage. Uh, let's say if I say a pre-revenue stage, I'll say the maximum dilution you can do in a pre-revenue stage is 10% if you are raising funds. And if your funding requirement is, let's say, $100,000, 
that means you are talking your valuation to be minimum of a million dollar that's the way your math has to be and if there is a kind of a challenge with respect to investors then we will talk about some of the instruments that you can use and you can still reach and try to uh, get into the market of raising hundred thousand dollars then you can talk about regulatory frame some of the countries because we are multi country uh, like participants here some of the times the regulatory framework kind of prohibits you to raise certain type of investing thing as well let's say if i take an example of indonesia sometimes in indonesia straight line equity is not very easy that means you need to kind of find a different ways to compensate as an investor same way if i go to nepal in nepal it takes me almost a year to get the money even after shareholder agreement is signed so that means if i am an investor i need to keep in mind that there will be at least one year delay in terms of deployment of funds at the same time the entrepreneur need to understand that if they require the money after one year they need to start preparing today and that also means that some of the times you may not be able to raise funds of a desired quality so if i talk about let's say nepal as an example it's not a great destination for equity not because the people are not entrepreneur but because of the regulatory challenges so that kind of things sometimes uh, kind of discourages some certain type of investors to come in at the same time nepal is one of the top destination for grants which is very easy and nepal is the last destination if i put like this one of the last if i say for debt because uh, uh, this uh, ecosystem of regulatory thing is a make or break in terms of then the last but not the least and the most important is the timeline what is the timeline of you to get into these kind of fundraising initiatives as and these are such a crucial things to kind of get into the other sites coming in and then if we put it across another thing which is very important is the type of funding and that's where like i will i'll emphasize on it there are three fundamental types of funding we all talk, we know it but we have not kind of experienced one is grant that we talk about it because that's a, one of the most popular form when we started the social enterprise second is equity because equity kind of give you that catalytical uh, uh, swing in terms of getting into a high growth potential and third is debt coming in and in that the all these three things also have a combination of blended finance and as we kind of move forward in terms of social enterprise above and beyond if i put it like this blended finance has become one of the most relevant tool for raising investments in different ways if i say investments or financing if i put i, I will i'll shuffle between two and uh, blended finance is one of the uh, popular ones not just because it is it is a uh, kind of innovative but it is also because it transcends the challenges or regulations it transcends the kind of stages of uh, enterprise you may have it also transcends the kind of ability of you to pay or not in terms of the tangible way because there is a non tangible thing that also comes in and there is another side which is also equally popular is and which which is kind of gaining attraction is can we also uh, imbibe sori that means return investment we all have heard but can we get social return on investments accountable as well and can it also become a parameter of our success so these are the broad fundamentals of i will say in a investments if we put it like this uh, i would like to do all these things as a kind of a walk through between all of us and then we can multiply as we go forward and if i go to the next level if i if somebody asks you what is the right way of investors finding there's nothing to rocket science let me be honest today with the advent of internet the advent of things we all are talking together and things first is networking it's the most important thing don't lose networking opportunities but i uh, let me also give you a very simple thing networking needs to be done with a head you cannot do networking with homogeneous one is if all of us are entrepreneurs and we are sitting here who on earth will uh, get investment from we can't let's say if everybody is lawyer in this group and we are trying to get business for us we will not be able to get business we need to have a heterogeneous group where we do network homogeneous group doesn't help let's say all of us are in agriculture we could be peer groups but that's not the network i'm saying the network always comes if you are talking to people which are different than you and that is very very important for us to do the second is whether some of us like or not we need to keep participating to some kind of competitions forums that's very important third which is very important is referrals which is equally relevant and fourth is your own research and in that whole uh, frame of things one of the important thing that we need to be clear is 
we need to choose the investors as i said the the entrepreneur first approach means you need to know what kind of investor value systems are there what kind of investor parameters are there and so on and so forth most of the investors will be specifying what kind of niche areas they invest in or what kind of a specific criteria they have and otherwise if they are not very clear you can have the right to ask them what kind of a uh, segments they invest in what kind of ticket size they have or let's say what kind of uh, way they measure success is there is only roi which is irr based or there is another parameters as well and in that whole thing let me also kind of put down here my my kind of a small like fast track kind of thing and take a pause and understand if there is anything anybody would like to speak at this stage when we are having some kind of a interactive thing it's good to hear people's voices as well john uh, if anyone from the participant uh, would like to interact with the speaker today please feel free to raise your hand and uh, yeah. we'd be happy to unmute you If you have any questions or any additional thoughts, uh, you can also use the chat forum to be able to yeah. interact with the speaker. So I guess uh, there's no questions at this moment. So what we can do is let's do something more easier and fun. Uh, so what we will do is we will take up two case studies here, uh, and in the two case studies, what we will do is uh, we will try to see. a uh, couple of things like all of you will be divided into different groups and you need to come up with solutions on couple of aspects one is does this entity need an investment for growth if i say let's say this entity want to grow in three countries so i'm just asking does it need financing and if i say financing yes then the type of financing which you feel is relevant for them that's the second thing and then up uh, get get your guesstimate what kind of financing quantum could be okay uh, let's see how how things shapes up and feel free uh, even if you uh, have some kind of errors in terms of uh, uh, visualizing certain things don't mind this is something which is good for all of us we are doing some role play and when we are getting back we learn in this whole process as well so parita you want to play or akshay i play uh, the first we have so this first uh you know, like case study is on on a company which is based out of nepal and this is into uh, uh gender lens they are into self defense uh, uh fighting and they are award winning enterprise they have got awards from uh, defed they have got award from usa they have got award from uh canadian government and they have trained more than 50000 adolescent girls and boys in terms of self defense training and uh, they are now kind of looking forward for a growth and that this video is just to give you explaining about what fight back is all about so that then you can start into the three questions which i said okay parita yeah. i will play this video yes yes yeah is my screen visible yes please <laughs> Fightback is a sexual violence risk reduction educational program which teaches women and girls critical mental, vocal and physical skills to manage, mitigate and prevent the risk of sexual violence. Prevention and response. They need individual empowerment. So Fightback was designed in such a manner. being a girl people usually consider girls weak and i being a girl wanted to show the world that i can do something for myself and i can protect myself esteem and self image from attackers this was really life changing in a way because it really motivated and boosted my confidence levels
important for girls to know about it and know how to tackle with these situations. It's not only about physical stuff, you have to be mentally prepared. And this workshop has made me mentally, physically, as well as emotionally stable to tackle such situations. At least they have the confidence to walk out and they have the confidence to fight back. And I would suggest that everyone in Nepal and the world should be getting these kinds of trainings. Our vision is to ensure that every girl and woman is free from the risk of sexual violence. Great. So uh, there are four uh, questions that you need to come up with. So we have 10 minutes. One is what do they need finance? Like in case, so the, the scenario I'm saying is this startup is trying to launch in India. And when they are trying to launch in India, we are debating on four things. One is do they need finance? Second, if they need finance, the type of finance required. Third, what is the rough estimate of fund required? Whatever the a kind of way you are trying to come come up with some kind of a base why you are talking about that money. And then the fourth thing, what do you feel the valuation of this entity should be in India when they're coming? So pretty simple. Keep it up. Whatever the specific, I will say, assumptions are, just keep it handy. We'll discuss and it will be very interesting when we come back. So I think the 10 minutes starts now. So uh, Parita, you are segregating them into groups. Yes, we will be Great. sending all of you to breakout rooms. Yeah. yeah, and you can sh share the questions again. Yeah, Absolutely. And requesting everyone to please nominate a POC from your group so you can come out and present the team's views. Thank you. Please join your rooms.
Hello everyone. Requesting y'all to please join the breakout rooms that y'all have been assigned to. There must be an option on your device that saying join breakout room. If y'all don't seem to be seeing that option, please message us and we will assign you to a room. Thank you. Hi, Parisa. Uh, are you here? Yes, I am. Yes. I think uh, we'll have to go to the different rooms and help initiate things. Sure. Uh, That's it. Yeah, I think we can move around different rooms. I uh, think room one is doing fine. Okay. And how much time do we have left? Started at three uh, thirty, right? Five okay. minutes. Five more minutes. Cool. Five more minutes. I'll go into room two. Anuj, I think you should also move to different rooms and help in the. Okay, if you if that will be, that will help. Uh, so, so what I felt is in just ten minutes that I will take questions as it happens because. It should be shareable. So okay, okay, ठीक है. That's okay. ठीक है. Just just want to see if people are uh, talking. Yeah. Room one is going fine. Uh, just go and see. Okay. Hi Ravi, good to see you here.
Um, Anil, I'm going to request one person from each room to present the views. And do you want sure. them to uh, summarize their points in two minutes? Hmm. Absolutely. That would be easy. Shall we converge back? Yes, we're just closing yeah. the room. We'll give about 60 seconds for everyone to join back. We will be closing in 20 seconds, so they should all be streaming in. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the session. Uh, I hope you all were able to have a very interesting discussion in the breakout rooms. Uh, some of the rooms that we had the chance to visit uh, seem to have very interesting discussion about the, uh, Nepal itself and the business uh, that it had to offer as a service uh, model for the business itself. Uh, I would now like to invite the POC of each room uh, appointed to raise their hand and we will give you permissions to unmute yourself and present the views from your room. If you were not able to appoint a POC, please feel free to uh, raise your hand and we will unmute you. Maybe we ask the group A first, first and then B and C. Sure. Would anyone from group one uh, like to present the thoughts of their group? Please put your thoughts either on chat or please uh, raise your hand and we will be more than happy to give you an opportunity to interact. Um, 
Akbar, would you like to please present the views? Sure, Ashish, we will unmute you. Thank you. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes we please, can. Yes, yeah. please, yeah. So in our group, kind of, we had a number of um, uh, kind of different points of views. I mean, the consensus was that, yes, we do need, um, they need, do need funding because they're entering into a new kind of geographic location or like a territory. So there's obviously, there's are some sunken kind of costs which will have to be um, uh, incurred, like, you know, hiring new people or just using experts on the ground or consultants or whatever, just to kind of get them um, familiarized for that territory. In terms of what the financing they might need, I mean, would be best kind of suited to um, consensus was either a grant because based on the subject matter these guys are dealing with, you know, they could approach um, they could approach a lot of like, you know, philanthropic funds or uh, other kind of organizations who support causes, you know, uh, social causes. Um, the other view was to kind of go to, a, to an angel investor and kind of who, who might be passionate about, you know, women's empowerment and kind of go for a convertible note kind of option. Um, just to kind of test the market in like pilot it, pilot out there model in probably a district which where they could probably create a lot of impact um and in terms of money we we were thinking you know we, our kind of estimates were lying between like not more than like fifty thousand two hundred thousand dollars i think would at least give them a good runway to kind of um recruit people their team and run the operations for at least you know 12 to 18 months after which once they have like product like product market fit they could then go and kind of raise more commercial finance or even look at debt funding if they if they can be sustainable through some kind of subscription model where they can generate revenues then you know they don't rate as i think anuj was saying that you know why dilute just you know go for debt um so yeah that was a conclusion from our team Super. Thank you for sharing that, Akbar. And we also see Ashish uh, on the chat requesting to be unmuted. Ajay, if we can please unmute him. Hi, Ashish, you are uh, uh, unmuted. Ashish Pandey, do you seem to have uh, been able to unmute now? Yeah. Um, she should be, Ashish. She should be able to speak. Okay, uh, unfortunately, we're not able to hear Ashish at the moment. Uh, maybe Anuj, we move on to room two. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, would anyone from group two uh, like to present the thoughts from their own group? And if you're unable to find the raise hand option, please feel free to say uh, on the chat that you need to be unmuted and our team will do so. Can we hear from anyone from the room too, please? It's fine, even if it is a rough uh, kind of a discussion, because the idea is like primarily to understand how you are kind of thinking through it, visualizing it in a simplistic manner, and we can build on it. Okay. Uh, Purna, I think, is from room two. Uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. her audio is not working. Uh, Purna, if you could please put on the thoughts of group two on chat, and we will read it out from there. We will uh, now move on to uh, room three in the interim. Can anyone from room three please raise their hands or uh, uh, put out a hi on chat and we will unmute you. Uh, 
Uh, in the meantime, uh, Ashish Pandey has given a one summary uh, that uh, yes, funds are required, uh, grants, social issues uh, needs to include every one. Later, we can ch charge from those uh, ones mm. next level to uh, for training. Tie up of with partners. Okay. Okay. Uh, target three lakh schools from fifteen lakh total schools in India. Uh, fund is three hundred crores over three years. Okay, so there's a calculation that is provided. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and Purna has said that for profit or not for profit enterprises will be important to understand. Ashish Pandey adds that uh, assuming each training costs uh, 1 lakh rupees. 10,000, yeah. Sorry, 10,000. That's okay. Great. Uh, maybe Anuj, you can uh, help us summarize this discussion now. And maybe yeah. participants from room 3 will add their thoughts on the chat. So I thought like uh, rather than getting into a hypothetical case, like I feel like it is a real thing and they are actually really wanting to come into another geography. So taking a very realistic uh, case study and trying to think through how we visualize as, as lots of us are founders here and also lots of us are advisors to the founders. So you have to see a couple of things and very rightly so some of you have asked very pertinent question. Somebody asked, Puna asked like whether it is for profit or non-profit. So let me begin with that. So structure, legal structures become one of the most important thing in terms of how you would like to scale. Now, if you don't want to have the growth the way we are talking growth, you can have any structure. But for getting the kind of compounded growth that we are talking, uh, we need to have a structure which has the ability to raise investments. And for raising investments, like if I take in India, it is only a private limited structure. But if I go to even Africa in a couple of countries, we have structures which are equivalent to that, like the British uh, like co corporate structure, if I put it like this. At the same time, if you are getting into, so I, I was giving you a uh, clear thing earlier, like if I'm going to Nepal, which is a regulatory heavy country, raising equity is difficult. So even if you want to scale faster, uh, equity, uh, getting that equity since it is difficult, having a hybrid structure, which means that you may have a social enterprise, which is non-profit, still makes sense. But in a country like India, which is now a middle uh, middle income country, and there it is one of the third largest startup destination, having a entity which has a compounded growth possibility, you can only do something which can absorb investments. And for absorbing investment means you can only have a private limited structure. So that's a very clear thing. If you go for a non-profit, you can only scale to the level of your grant raising capabilities. And grant raising capabilities means you need to structure that entity which is comfortable to raise grants. And it takes many years for you to become eligible for raising grants. Like uh, in many of the big foundations in, in India, if I say they need a three year track record for you to actually seek their investments uh, like Tata Trust and many others, they don't even entertain you before that. The same way, if I go to Kenya, uh, the rules are very simple in terms of raising a uh, grant. But at the same time, when you get into equity, it is a far more evolved geography than other countries in Africa. So you have to also understand how this whole thing is happening. And that's where I was going to the first thing. What is your vision as an entrepreneur? Do you want to grow uh, by thinking as a sustainability to be the most important fulcrum of your growth? Or do you want to also have time with respect to the partner's approach, which is very important. Now, if I, if I kind of see certain things, uh, some people have also raised some questions as well, but maybe I can start with one thing. I, I, I was asking one thing, do you need financing? If suppose a fight back has to come to India, so I will say unanimously, yes, they will need financing. Now, what is the stage at which they will need financing? They will need the financing when they actually start the operations here, the launch here. But before the launch, when they happen, there'll be a period where they will do the structuring to come here. And in that, you will not have a very strong, big fulcrum of investment which are required. The investments are staggered, could be staggered. 
and that's where i was trying to ask you what type of financing required now the first most easiest financing which is required is a promoter financing now we have none of us if we have a skin in the game coming in then we will not be talking about our growth so pro promoter uh, financing if i say bootstrap that is one of the thing that we are talking second is if somebody was saying that i need to have a grant because it is a socially relevant enterprise then i think we are also trying to limit a social enterprise definition social enterprise definition definitely means that there needs to be a profit with a purpose but we are talking about profit for sure it is at the forefront of the whole business so if i am talking about profit that means there could be a shareholder value appreciation which can also happen and to do that one of the uh, more innovative thing could be you can think of uh, angel round also is at the second stage can we try to do some kind of family friend mentor round because these guys already have a very formidable i will say brand recall in nepal and they also have brand recall in three important countries western countries europe that means mobilizing fund for getting into a bigger geography will not be that difficult now if i say for every dollar which they have raised in nepal they can easily raise between 3 to 5 dollars if they are coming to india for a simple reason that india is a far bigger geography that's one that means what you are talking about is the pie which you can cater becomes bigger and if you talk about that that means your fund requirement which you can visualize and make it more sustainable is also higher that's the thing so if you are talking about rough estimate of fund required if i'm staggering it out one is setting up setting up stage could be between 6 months to 8 months then you are launching yourself and that launching also does not mean even if i get 2 million dollars which is like 15 crore indian rupees or nepal rupees is to uh, 20 crores i cannot spend on day one so if i have to raise that uh, 2 million dollars i can visualize it today even if it comes after a year i am still good to go because i will take some time to set it up as well and when you are talking about valuation as i said the most easiest way for you as to visualize is how much you want to spend in the first two years and then calculate what kind of uh, i will say dilution you can have and that way if you kind of visualize it will be far more easier as well now obviously we can have estimates of like uh, talking about let's say 300000 schools we can uh, reach out and so on and so forth but to do that we need formidable budgets coming in as well in terms of the brand to build also in terms of deployment on the ground and so on and so forth now we know that this company is in nepal that means if they have to come here they have to train lots of trainers here at the same time they have to also expand to different geographies logistics nightmares having trainers which will be becoming master trainer it all takes time so it is not just a function of money it is also a function of bandwidth and if we talk about two things you cannot raise a very huge amount of money on day one because you are not having the capability to absorb and that becomes your limiting factor and that limiting factor if i extrapolate is how i can understand what should what should be my fund to be raised in the first year or second year and for second year i should not raise funds today i should be able to seek that second year funding later part of the first year and that's how at least i will solidify this whole thing in a much more manner uh, i think some of the people have put down some of the questions maybe i'll i'll just take it up uh like if i if i kind of yes so somebody asked me uh under what condition certain startups able to raise venture debt specific characteristics about their revenue cash flow that could talk about uh, would be fantastic so let me be very clear here like a debt per se for a early stage startup from the banking channels is next to impossible but at the same time there are certain government schemes in different countries which are there which allows you to raise some level of debt like if i talk about india we have a startup india scheme where you can raise up till 150000 uh without giving a collateral which is unsecured loan but to get into that uh, uh, like i will say arena to raise it takes lots of time as well over the same time venture debt at today's level cannot be uh, feasible if you don't have an equity investor coming so uh, one of the important reason that people like us visualize a family friend mentor at least some kind of around earlier also means that you are testing the water at the same time you are not bridging the uh, like burning the bridges with lots of uh, institution investors at the same time you are able to get to a stage of pre revenue if you can do that with uh, with a focused money raise 
that is always helpful at the same time if you can have a price round even if not convertible that is another very important thing which we should know and in that if you have some kind of a price round then only you can talk about venture debt venture debt cannot be raised if you have never raised a money on equity and that's the dilemma that we are having because venture debt is all about valuing your shares in a certain manner and your revenues will never patch up or match with respect to the the kind of money you are raising and if you are raising a very small amount of money let's say you are talking about let's say $20000 you have to raise in venture debt and for that they take let's say 40% of the equity in spite of the fact that you have never raised it is too much a risk that you are taking but it is you don't get into that and the second thing in venture debt is in most of the regions we are talking the south asian region or african region the venture debt entities are actually giving money at a higher interest rate than even the bankers because they are taking more risk and that also means uh, that you may or may not be able to service that debt and they have a very high chance to convert into equity so that is something which i would say unless you have not raised a formidable round getting into venture debt is a risky thing second is somebody is asking insights on a potential revenue model if at all only then equity or debt comes into play i fully agree you need to have a revenue model and lots of other discussions but let's let's face one important thing that we need to clarify when you start as an entrepreneurship idea you are also brainstorming you are also having a very dynamic stage of your uh, journey and many times you are not perfecting what kind of margins you may have you are not perfecting the pricing that you can keep because you are exploring in the market what is the right pricing of my products let's take like this what side of margins should be there <coughs> and also what kind of market i can cater as well sometimes the limitation is not the market limitation could be my supplies as well so let's say if i take an example of uh, the same let's say in himalayas if i am trying to do any product company my products are always in shorter supply that also means that my product should be valued at a higher price then only i can justify the kind of return i can have otherwise i cannot do that then somebody is asking a uh, 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 mohammed from nehru is asking i'm looking for funds for plastic recycling into kenya now let me put it like this. certain segments are sunshine sectors today they are one of the most see one of the easiest thing like the moment you get into climate change you get into something which is very deep uh, like impact space you have a very good possibility of is in two types of investments in a shortly there but the second thing which you can also have it is a blended finance instrument as well where you are saying i have a milestone based uh, performance i can have and on the basis of that i'll be given certain amount of money uh, so it could be let's say if i am able to galvanize and remove one ton of let's say plastic from let's say one of the rivers then a foundation is saying i'll give you a guarantee or i will give you a money which is equal into that whole aspect so i could be a risk investor which could be a bank let's put it like this so mohammed gets uh, 200000 dollars from a bank that mohammed is going to uh, remove let's say two ton of plastic from a river which is like which is source of uh, drinking water and there is a foundation which says today i cannot understand whether mohammed can create impact or not however if mohammed is able to do this whole deliver in the next 6 months i'm comfortable giving that grant to him now what happens is one side there is a risk investor who says i can give 200000 dollars but i need interest as well on top of it let's say 10% so i'm saying 200 200000 dollars and 20000 as interest other side there is a foundation which is saying i might give let's say 200000 dollars the moment the impact is great in terms of the quantum of plastic removal mohammed says i am very comfortable at the same time is another aspect to it that this plastic which is removed mohammed has the ability to sell it at 50000 dollars because it there is a market that could be sold so technically we are talking about the pie of 250000 dollars and in that if everything goes good mohammed is able can able to generate a 30000 dollar profit as well because that is something which we are trying to talk about as blended finance aspect coming now let's put another side somebody was talking about uh like uh, one second i'm just talking in uh, yeah how can non organization especially in the african uh, countries get funds to carry out their projects now one of the important thing which we need to be clear about startups 
is enterprise building initiative now if you are kind of talking about individual capacity you are talking at a consulting opportunity that is not enterprise building that is not startup so it is very very critical that you are able to demonstrate a organization based opportunity or kind of building up of your whole concept a individual cannot match the kind of multiple fold uh, i will say growth that you can uh, unlock through a enterprise building initiative so just to kind of give a sense you google anuj sharma and you will not get me in the first 20 pages as well believe me it's true because it's such a common name in india the moment you say anuj sharma i'll see sir you'll get me in the first three google chat uh, searches as well that's the power of how the enterprise branding comes in and it's very very critical that you think through that and it is also very important that when you are talking about these things even if you are doing projects it all kind of reverberates far more powerful now people still can earn like consultants earn more money sometimes by uh, by uh, then uh, i will say startups founders however what startup founders are building is far more formidable sustainable and also uh, if you ask me uh, is is powerful in its own way because you are not building for yourself you are building for the ecosystem you are building for the communities that you belong from you are also building resilience in terms of the ideas you are talking it can have a cushion which can absorb different kind of instruments of financing as well you will be far more uh, like i will say risk uh, a lower risk will be there in a enterprise than individual as well so that's one important thing now somebody was asking fcri of 95% institution not renewed so funds are stopped in new government now uh, this is this is very very uh, i will say fcr is a political statement which is there now fcra when i'm talking about uh, just to kind of uh, give a uh, clarity to other people from other geographies is sometimes governments can use grants uh, ability of raising grants they can actually stop because it's a political thing if they feel like grants are coming to benefit them they will do it but if suppose politicians feel it is not benefiting them they have a very easy thing to plug it and close it but at the same time if you are talking that this uh, money which is coming is for enterprise building capacity building and also scaling up the whole enterprise telling no to that kind of idea will be far more difficult so that's why i'm saying even if we like it or not everybody is converging towards now uh, if you see we all talk about social enterprise initially all the social enterprise when i say 20 years back my own uh, i started out 15 years back majority of microfinance was non profit and now when you see majority of microfinance is for profit because as a investor if i am able to get a return or at least i have a hope of getting a return that is a better scenario than i am giving a grant which is as it is giving me some kind of a impact but beyond that i am not getting anything else but if you give them beyond multiple things that means you are talking about they are getting impact they are also getting some kind of money back but they can also get some kind of a leverage out of it they are expanding and also they are far more permanent like as a shareholder i'll be more permanent in enterprise than giving a grant because every year you exhaust as an enterprise next year you don't care about that uh, like donor because if they don't give the uh, donation they are gone there is no history of them because that happened last year but what if if i am a shareholder i'll remain with you for the next 5 to 7 years it's far more longevity and that also allows me some kind of upside as well if i can do that so it's a much more powerful tool uh, that's the way i will look into it then somebody was asking here in terms of it like uh, if you if you are talking about uh, like uh, what is the co cost of training and other thing i think that's that's it but is there any questions here like people would like to ask me like happy to answer and we can get into another quick uh, case study as well and believe me like even if you are not kind of understanding this whole thing the the way let's say if you don't understand mathematics you don't understand the amount of funds to be raised you don't understand what is the valuation believe me as a founder if you have to go to the next level certain things you need to learn whether you like it or not the same way you need to also learn lots of legal terms as well if you are signing as a founder you are you are the only person who is liable for that whole thing 
So you have to learn certain tricks of the trade, whether you like it or not. Anyone here like who would like to talk? If anyone from the attendees would like to share something or ask, please feel free to put it on the chat box and we will raise it to Anuj. In the meantime, Anuj, since we yeah. are 20 minutes, uh, we have about 20 minutes left. Would you like yeah. to move on to the second case study for the day? Yes, absolutely. So just to kind of quickly give a brief. So this startup is primarily into healthcare and it's a product company. So previous one was uh, having a uh, kind of a coloring of services, a product, but this is a pure play uh, product company. And they are primarily focused on pre, uh, like uh, prenatal, uh, like I will say maternity deaths. So let's see how you all perform. So same thing, we have 10 minutes, same thing which is required. But in this case, you're not saying it is entry into a country. It is saying that I would like to scale up now. So the only difference from the four questions we are talking is, in this time, they are saying we would like to grow. We would like to grow fast. And keeping that into mind, let's try to answer all these things. So, uh, no. you want to play this? Yeah. Sure, Anish. In India, a country of over 1.2 billion people, there is one maternal death every 10 minutes due to pregnancy complications. 59% of those are due to high-risk pregnancies. 90% of those deaths can be prevented by proper care and education. But the doctor to pregnant women ratio is as small as one doctor for every 2,000 pregnant women. Now, a country with this mass of population and facing huge income inequality, how do we provide mothers the care they need? Introducing Care Mother. It's a revolutionary mobile health solution for regular health care checkups during pregnancy. You can now do medical checkups yourself. Upload the information on the cloud. Your doctor can access this info from anywhere in the world through a web portal. All you need is a smartphone. But what about those who can't afford a smartphone? What about the places with no internet connection? Out of 30 million women who get pregnant each year in India, 75% are from rural areas. We got that sorted too. A health worker from the nearest hospital will be equipped with the health kit and the app. They will be trained to do the checkup of all the pregnant women in the locality assigned to them and remotely upload all the data to the cloud. The kit has everything a primary health checking needs for pregnant mothers. Blood pressure meter, glucose check device, lancet, medicine, weighing scale, hemoglobin meter, thermometer, fetal heart rate meter, Looking at the need to provide regular healthcare access, early diagnosis of high-risk pregnancy, and empowering health workers and women with smart tools, we believe Care Mother does it all. We dream to be in the hands and hearts of each mother to serve more than 3 million pregnancies in the next five years. Back to you, Anand. Yeah, I think we can have a quick breakout in 10 minutes for us all and then we can come back. And I sure. hope like uh, people will give a try at least in terms of putting down some of their thoughts into it. Absolutely. Breakout rooms have been launched. Everyone, please join your respective breakout rooms uh, and try and answer the same questions as earlier. Uh, feel free to call us out to the breakout room in case you are having any issues uh, or have any questions. We reconvene in 10.
there will be a join breakout room option that you could see at your device. Please click on that and you will be able to interact with other attendees in the breakout room.
Hi, Anush. We'll be closing the rooms now, so we'll have participants back in about Absolutely. sixty seconds. Great. Uh, it seems like most of us are joining back in. And thank you for that wonderful discussion in the breakout rooms. Uh, they seem to be very, very um, strong. Uh, uh, sort of suggestions and recommendations, but also coming from data-driven solutions. Uh, I would request someone from group one to please put it on chat that they would like to um, summarize the findings from their group. And we would uh, request you to unmute and put you uh, on the video. <laughs> Is there anyone? Ashish Chen. Okay, sure. Uh, Ajay, can I please request you to unmute Ashish Jain? Um, Ashish uh, Pandey, uh, would you like to? Yeah, sure. We will unmute you. You would have received a request to unmute. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Hear me? yes we can hear you now. Please go okay, ahead. Okay, okay. So our group discussed that you know there are two aspects of it. One, approximately thirty million. Uh, pregnant women at a given point of time in India, you would like to scale it up to them. 25%, let's assume urban, uh, mobile, uh, smartphone available women. So we are going to target 10% of that in year one. So which means approximately one, uh, 0.5 to 1 million females we are going to target. And approximately cost of acquisition will be approximately 200 rupees, which includes the acquisition as well as administration cost. So it comes close to 20 crore rupees towards the acquisition of these females. This is the money required. This time, you'd like to go in pure you know, uh, business model. We'll be seeking uh, non-grant based uh, thing. The second part is 75% female, uh, roughly uh, 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 you know, and, and so residing in let's say six lakh of villages, so we would like to target approximately sixty thousand villages, where the number of deaths as well as you know the potential is very very high, and the data will be available in census, and would like to target with uh, uh, manpower. We tried using Asha, Sayogini, ANM, etc., but because they are government, it may not be very very possible to rope in commercially. Therefore, we will require sixty thousand manpower. May require two lakh rupees. Uh, per annum to acquire them and then uh, you know this is going to be the overall cost uh, that we are going we'd like to raise, raise raise through you know investment uh, from capable partners and would put you know some return on investment for them maybe other members can contribute from the group one that was my understanding <laughs> sure thank you so much ashish I would now like to invite some thoughts from group two and three. Gautam, I believe you had some interesting perspective about partnerships with the government and um, how they could scale up even without that. Would you like to please share some thoughts? 
Yeah, hi. Uh, so, yeah, I actually didn't have anything, not on a partnership with the government at the initial stage. I just felt that uh, a model like that would, I think, in uh, urban areas, uh, infrastructure for medical is a lot better. So, a plan like that would do best in uh, route in uh, tier three and four. And I think, you know, once you rope in a good segment of doctors to online evaluate and everything, I think the early part would be between grant and maybe H and I early seed to you know basically put together what these guys can grow, get a proof of concept, get a revenue model where they're you know unit positive on every consultation, and once they reach a stage where because I think if this is an online only app, you're assuming that most of the clients would be net savvy. It's a language. I mean, it 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 caters to multiple languages, so people are comfortable. They would definitely need uh, money to scale. To having, like I said, my suggestion would have been for partnerships with chemists to put up signs, ASHA workers, because I don't think the regular ones would be social media savvy. So I just feel that yeah, that that would be a route that till they can you know get a certain sizable traction with a certain amount of grant with certain type of marketing in one or two regions. After that, they can raise either venture debt or equity, depending on the partner. If it's a strategic partner who is going to add a lot of value, they can go for equity. But if it's they need to scale more before they get that ideal partner, that they could look at venture debt that's convertible, and because most of their money would initially go on marketing, uh, but because it'll be mostly offline and feet on street, is what my thoughts would be seeing the model. That's it. Thanks. Thank you for sharing that, Gautam. And we have Mamta who's all. Also requested to be unmuted, Mamta. You will be able to speak now. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yes, Mamta. We can, can you hear, hear you. me. Hello. Yes, yes, Mamta. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Uh, I'm not able to hear you, folks. I'll I'll finish what I had to say. Yeah. So, uh, since this falls in uh, prevention of maternity deaths, which is government's prerogative, uh, whichever political party that is, so I thought the grants is the way to go. Uh, I'm unable to hear you, folks. I'll join in again. Anybody else would like to share their thoughts here before Mamta joins back? I guess not, Anuj. Uh, okay, no worries. So what I can do is I can quickly summarize. Uh, uh, yeah, so Mamta is here. Hi, Mamta. So maybe I, I would like to just kind of give a, a brief about this enterprise. So KNX primarily the presentation which I'm showing you, I was showing you up, is uh, four years ago. And uh, in the last four years, they actually not just uh, survived, but they thrived as well. And uh, one of you have rightly guessed, like they, they definitely raised grant. And it was not from the government of India, but from uh, government of Canada. And uh, they that was the initial, I will say, the pilot stage that they did it. And then they went on to become sustainable as well. So as we are talking, they became uh, sustainable in their own way. That means they started generating revenue. And their revenues were having decent amount of profits, which were able to pay their salaries as well. So they were able to break even and they were able to get net profits as well. Uh, and uh, just to kind of give also a bigger perspective in healthcare related things, it takes much more time, uh, similar to education as well, where the gestation period is far more in terms of making it profitable. Sometimes these types of features also comes in agriculture and others as well. That means there is a very important thing that we need to be clear with is the patience of the investors. Are they looking for the three year horizon, five year horizon or seven year horizon? Many of us gets into three-year horizon, which is actually a pretty crazy thing. Either it is debt or equity, you cannot repay in three years. It's too small a period. So you need to have a horizon when you are talking to any investors, potential one of a minimum of five years, 
I'll say seven years is far better. So with this, like, I would like to take a pause and uh, Parita, if you uh, want to kind of say something, uh, like anybody else has it here. I, I, I think it has been a great session, Anur, and thank you for answering all the questions of our attendees and uh, You've, you've been very kind in being able to give us a very broad perspective of what's required uh, for startups to be able to raise funding. Uh, we, we we do have some additional questions coming in uh, on the Whoa platform. Uh, we will be sending the, those out to you over email and would request you to uh, please respond to us and we will get back to our attendees on the same. Thank you again, Anuj, for spending one and a half hour of this power pack session on exactly what can our attendees do to be able to raise funds and look at the more blended finance approach than stick to equity or grants. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And hope to be in touch with you all. Take care. Bye. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Bye. And feel free to interact on the Whoa platform as and when you all feel had the chance to. Thank you, everyone.